All right. Hello again, adventurers, and welcome to another exciting episode of Designing New D -D Dragons. Join us as we create what may be your new favorite character. Uh, quick reminder, if you enjoy this stuff, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to turn notifications on. All of those th the things are super, super important. Uh, and as a side note, super sorry, the videos have been massively in consistent. Life has been interesting. Um, and I'm going to do my best to get back to a regular schedule, but until this interesting thing resolves itself, uh, <laughs> life is going to continue to be interesting. Um, so, yes! Let's see what we can do. First things for first. Um, I need a drink. Alright, so, 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 um, anyone that watched, uh, my last, uh, Discovering New Dragons, uh, uh, video, there we go, uh, knows what we're going to be doing this week. Uh, we are going to be delving into the world of Transformers, Robots in Disguise. Uh, I can't do the cool little, like, like, robot -y sound thing that they do because that's all synthesized sound, and I'm not sure a human voice can do that. But I'm certain, like, Frank Welker could probably do it because Frank Welker can do anything. thing. But I'm not Frank Welker, okay? And I hope that's his name because I, uh, uh for, for anyone that doesn't know, I have this massive problem with names specifically. I just, I can't remember them. The create the characters I create, I can't remember their names, um, to the point that every time I run an RPG, um, one of the reasons I stream them is on the overlay, it will have all of their names on it. Um, and when I used to run, uh, for the Adventures League of Conventions and that, I would get little table tents and have people write their names so I would know what their character names were. Because otherwise I would never remember any of them. Um, so if I ever say a name, you're like, that's the wrong name. It's because my brain has just gone, name, name, we need a name. Take this one! Um, yeah. So I think that's the name of a voice actor that does a lot of, like, animal voices. But if it's not... Screw it. Anyway, um, let's build some Transformers. So... Uh, again, one of my kind of requirements for me to do a Designing New Juju Dragons, uh, and because they follow Discovering New Dragons, for me to do Discovering New Dragons is I need a form fillable sheet. And we've used uh, a form fillable sheet uh, like this b -b 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 before. Um, I've actually built a Transformers character before as one of my uh, Daily December uh, things. So none of this is really that surprising. And again, we're doing the essence system. So let's go ahead and actually follow the steps that uh, are in the core rule, rule book. Um, and the first step in the rule book is character concept. Um, this is extremely common when you're creating uh, a character for an actual game because the characters I create on designing new done, uh, uh, Designing new Juju Dragons um, are not, are very rarely, uh, if ever, going to be used for an actual character. Fun fact, one of the open legend characters I created, I actually got to use uh, a level up version of it uh, in a, uh, uh, a three shot that we did over on Zelda Universe. Uh, it was called The Imprisoning War, and you can actually check it out on the Zelda Universe YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, so if you guys want to see how that character played in action, uh, it's there. Uh, it's about like five, six hours over th three episodes. But I had a lot of fun. Uh, I annoyed the hell out of my friend, uh, the Game Master Elias. Um, and basically, uh, <laughs> basically just cut the legs off of most of his bad guys. Because anytime they would make an attack, I would just go in and redirect the attack at the, the, them half the time getting stuns as well uh so it was really really fun but anyway so because uh this is not going to be for an actual game starting out with a character concept is remarkably difficult because your character concept should relate to the game and the setting and and things like that and i just i have none of that so in general i'm not 
going to be doing character concepts for just designing new dragons in ever. Um, there'll be a few times when I go, I want to do a character like this. Um, but for the most part, I like to be inspired by the options that they give me. So that being said, now this is where I disagree with uh, the book here. And it's one of the few times that I disagree with this particular book. I've mentioned before, I didn't think the Power Rangers RPG um, book itself was written super well. Um, it was their first time uh, uh, writing a book for Essence 20. They made some mistakes. They improved upon them in every subsequent book. And the, the latest books have been phenomenal. Um, and it wasn't that that book was bad. It was just there were some things that were unclear. It was hard to understand in certain points. And there were certain things that were written out of order. Well, this, in my opinion, is written out of order because step two is Essence score increases in skill point investments. So the second thing that it teaches you is um, about the Essence scores, which is nice, but it doesn't give you a, a huge explanation of how this stuff works. You don't get that until you go to chapter six. Um, and then it tells you you get 12 Essence points and uh, to spend uh, however you want. And then you also will giga get um, three Essence points from your role at first level and one Essence point from your origin. Which is fine, but at this point, I guess if you have a character concept, you can start assigning essence points. Um, but if your character concept, you haven't even chosen your role yet, there's a very good chance that you're going to have to kind of alter your ideas about where you want to put your points depending on what abilities your role gives you. And they're going to influence your character concept. And then the next part, they talk about putting in skill points. Well, you can't actually completely put your skill points in at this point because you don't have the three essence scores uh the three essence points from your role or your one essence point from your origin so step two i would do and i will do uh, uh at least in this i always do this last when i'm building um when i'm b -b 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 building uh characters and again i think i understand why they do this because uh, again, if you open up the D and D Player's Handbook, I think any D and D Player's Handbook, but I know specifically the Fifth Edition one, um, what they do is uh, they talk about um, rolling your uh, attribute points before you choose your class or your b -b 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 background, um, and they kind of they do that because in the original v -v version, the first thing that you did was you rolled your. Uh, uh, you rolled your uh, ability scores. And the reason that you did that was certain classes required certain ability scores and you rolled your ability scores in order. Um, it was 3d6, not what uh, what they use now is 4d6 drop the lowest. The old school original Dungeons and Dragons was 3d6. So if you rolled triple ones, you had a three in one of your scores. Um, and uh, it meant that if you wanted to play a fighter, but you just accidentally rolled like a seven for your strength score, either you're not going to play a fighter or you're going to play the worst fighter ever because they need a strength score in original D&D. &D. Um, so I think that's why a lot of games start with rolling your attribute scores or rolling whatever your uh, ability scores, ability points, whatever they are, they say start with that and then start picking your classes because that's how it used to be done. Um, I don't really like doing that because of how important your role, and in this, how important your origin role and influences are in how the character is going to play. I find it significantly more helpful for me to have a free choice of my role, a free choice of my origin, and a free choice of my influence, and then put my skill points in to go, okay, well, I have this influence and I have this, um, I have this origin and I have the, 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 this role and focus, so it makes sense for me to put them in this way. Um, again, understand why they did it. Uh, I think it's backwards thinking um, done mostly because that's how everybody else did it, did, did, does it. And again, for those of you who don't remember, uh, this was originally supposed to be a fifth edition supplement. It was supposed to be kind of a transformation, <laughs> pun intended. Um, uh, it was supposed to be uh, kind of a transformation of D&D fifth edition so you could use it to play Transformers. And then they decided to create their own system, which is a phenomenal system. Really, really love it. 
Um, but you will see those kind of holding on to stuff that D and D does that I don't think D and D does right. I don't think you should choose your attributes before you choose your class, uh, and, uh, background and stuff like that. I think that is backwards thinking. Um, that comes from an earlier time where you didn't really create your character. The dice created your character and you kind of just had to live with it or you had to start a new character. Um, modern RPGs are much more about creating the character that you want. Old school RPGs are dealing with the cards that you were given, um, which can be a lot of fun. I mean, roguelikes are super popular for a reason. That can be a very, very fun uh, way to play. Um, it's just not the way that I tend to create characters. So now I've gone to my little rant. Um, <clears throat> uh, the next thing they do is uh, they have you select your influences. Which this one, I, again, I find kind of interesting that you start with a background in this one. I can't remember if that's how they did in Power Rangers. Again, can, have I mentioned that my memory is basically worthless? Um, there we go. I just want to, before, yeah, it's totally the wrong page, but yeah, go ahead and do that. Um, I just want to check to see if they do the, uh, the same thing here. So no, in Power Rangers, it's concept, origin, role, and then influences last. Um, so that, to me, the fact that the same company created this, <clears throat> same company created this, same group of people, and yet in this game, they think it's more important to start with your influences than it is to pick your origin and role. Um, and I think that says a lot about how the games are just different. Um, so we're going to follow, uh, we're going to follow the, uh, the guy that they have here. So we're going to start with influences. Um, <clears throat> and the influences for Transformers are just cool. Um, because again, <clears throat> in Power Rangers, influences are kind of like, you know, what you do on your off time. Um, because a lot of times, most Power Rangers teams are students. So all of them, their quote-unquote job is you're a student that happens to be a s -s 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 superhero. Um, for Transformers, because all of the Transformers lived on Cybertron and then came to Earth on the Ark fighting the Decepticons, they all had stuff before the Great War uh, and every th -th 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 thing. Uh, so this is literally your job before becoming uh, a Transformer. Um, and so they have some interesting ones. So <clears throat> the influences that we got here, and again, um, the Essence system, or the Essence 20 system is unique in the f -f 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 fact that um, your influence, you can choose a single influence, uh, but you can actually have multiple inf -f 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 influences and each one will come with a perk. And then each one after the first will also come with a hang up um, that causes uh, problems. And in this uh, specific one, you actually get to choose a hang up from a, uh, uh, from a list of suggested <laughs> hang ups for each uh, background. So there's a lot of customizability um, for, 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 for the influences specifically. Um, so first one we have is bureaucrat, uh, which I have been. Uh, cube player is basically a sports star. Experiment, that I just, I really love the idea of being, I was, uh, I was specially designed to do something weird. And they have four different perks you can choose. We're we're choosing experiment for one of our influences, so we're definitely going experiment. And then we're also going to choose. I wonder if it'll let me. No, maybe if I do it this way, let me do multiple lines. No, okay. I don't know why that one is that way, but who cares? Uh, so one of them is going to be uh, experiment, just because I think that's cool. So for the perks. My mustache is annoying the hell out of me today. I trimmed it slightly because I hate when my mustache like gets in my mouth. Uh, but for whatever reason, I missed something and it's annoying me. All right, so so choose one of the following four options. Uh, gain uh, upshift of one when shoving or attempting to break from a grapple. That could be fun. Uh, two, your carrying weight is doubled. Three, you gain an edge on 
technology skill tests in which you are not familiar with a specific technology alien to you. For example, Earth Automotive Technology for Cybertronians. Interesting. And then four, you have one additional integrated non-weapon hardpoint. Integrated non-weapon hardpoint? I've never done that. Because all your hardpoints are generally... All right, I have no idea how this is going to work. But I'm going to go one additional non-open hard point. Why are all of these... Has something changed? I haven't changed anything. Normally, you can have multiple lines in these, and I thought that's how it went the last time I did this. Maybe there was an update to Acrobat, and it changed everything? This is going to get very annoying very quickly, because I need multiple lines. We will see what happens. Let's go down to something that actually needs, so perks. Yeah, that still has, I don't know why those don't have multiple lines. That's weird. All right, whatever. So we're going to choose that for our perk. Um, and for potential hangups, I don't know if experiment's going to be our first or second one yet. We'll figure that out in a second. Uh, but let's see what else we are. So we are experimental. And then former senator, politician, gladiator. So basically um, combat sport. Hunter. That could be cool. Experimental hunter could be fun. Uh, inventor might be using, or might be amusing. Uh, an experimental inventor would be fun. Machinist, basically, you know, their version of a doctor. Um, racer, that could be fun. Experimental racer. Scavenger, security. War veteran. Hmm. I think I like the idea of an experimental hunter. I'm actually going to call it experimental hunter. And so the perk for this, gain an edge on skill test to use any technology of your own creation. Or no, sorry. Choose a survival specialization, whether or not you invested in that specialization. You gain an edge on skill test when that specialization comes into p -p play. So I'm going to real quick go to if I remember correctly survival is smarts survival so sampling uh, specialization I think tracking because one of the uh, so specializations in essence 20 can be anything uh, they give you some suggestions for stuff, but you can say that I specialize uh, in survival. I, I specialize in berry foraging, um, uh, which are uh, foraging, not forging, for the foraging, where you're just really, really good at, at finding berries or something like that. As long as you can tie it to a skill, um, you can use it. So uh, one of the suggested ones is tracking. I think I like that. So I'm going to go... Uh, survival. I'm not going to put that I have a specialization in it. I'm just going to go tracking. Just put edge. Uh, so I don't have to try and get it in here. I'm probably going to be able to remove that as well because I can just list my additional integrated hard point. Um, but yeah, and then hang ups. Let's go back to influences. Hunter. So potential hang uh, hang ups are earth spoiled, skeptical, or violent. Okay, so skeptic skeptical, you're an objective observer and concepts such as hope and inspiration don't impact you. You gain no benefit when an ally uses lend assistance on you. That's interesting. Violent, you're eager for war and seek to be the center of conflict. Any skill test you take during combat that is not explicitly related to said combat takes a downshift one interesting or 
or spoiled. You are excited by and attached to the cornucopia of beautiful treasures on earth and human culture have to offer to you. You're exposed to a gorgeous piece of earth arch. Blah, 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 blah. Let's try this blah, blah, one more time. When exposed to a gorgeous piece of earth art or culture, your skill tests suffer uh, downshift one. I like the idea of earth spoiled, so I think that's what I'm going to do. So, earth spoiled. Now, here's where we're going to find out just how bad this formatting is, because I don't remember it being this way. Copy, paste. Yeah, and as you can see, it doesn't let me add an additional line. I don't remember this sheet working that way, so I don't know why it's doing this now. Uh, so I'm just going to go... I'm just going to copy the downshift one because... Really? Come on because I don't know how to make a downshift one. Okay, so downshift one, when earth, art, or culture present. And there. Lucky for me, I don't have multiple uh, things. I'm gonna have to figure out why this has changed and why it's not letting me do multiple levels. Because again, I've built one of these and I'm actually gonna go back to my, the video I made, I think it was last year, maybe, I don't know. Um, just to see it had to be this past December because it didn't exist the December before. Um, just to see if something has changed recently on this. Oh, and I'm an Autobot. We'll do that. So there we go. There are influences. Moving on. <clears throat> oh, and I guess I, I should mention in here, step zero for character creation is discuss with your GM and other players. Um, which is an important thing to do, but again, I don't have a GM or other players. I'm just building a character, so it doesn't matter. So we've got our influences. Uh, now we're going to choose our origin. And as I mentioned in, <clears throat> as I mentioned in the uh, discovering new dragons for this, the origin not only is kind of like your your quote unquote race, where it's going to give you some benefits. In certain ways, it's also going to give you your alternate mode, um, which I uh, really, really love. Um, so let's go through. Um, <clears throat> and they call them uh, chassis um, for uh, your origins. They call it chassis selection. So they have uh, champion, uh, which is sports cars, luxury sedans, things like that. Um, I wonder, so I think it might be cool if for my, cause again, cause I'm experimental hunter. I think I want to be a bike. And so I think it might be cool if I did champion, uh, cause let's look at what's the alt form for champion. Uh, it's 60 foot, uh, which I think is relatively normal no it's it's fast and it does have size long crew two so according to this uh but a bike can have two people on it so i i think hmm Let's look to see the other one. So Cutter is uh, water uh, based. Lookout is a spy kind of based one. Um, and they specifically name uh, Bumblebee, Mirage, and Blaster as examples of Lookout. I don't think I'm going to make this a spy, but uh, a Hunter would make a very good spy. So we'll look again. Seeker is the flyer one, which is always cool. Support. Um... are big uh which is not what i'm looking for i don't want to be a big bike and that's all of them so oh i missed i missed a page so there's monolith which is super super big and that's that's optimus prime outrider outrider might be what i want 
Yeah. It's a little bit slower. Who do they have? They have Brawn, Hound, and Trailbreaker Outriders. Adventures by nature, you are a natural explorer capable of navigating the most challenging terrain and tracking down enemies, traps, and rare materials. You prefer all-terrain vehicles, including four-wheel drive SUVs and even the occasional amphibious vehicle. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. And then Rainmaker is, um, what's the size of, so Outrider bot mode is common or large and Outrider alt mode is common or large or long. Um, so theoretically, if I want to be a bike, I could be an Outrider and I'd be kind of an off-road style of a bike, which I think would be cool. Um, but I'm really, I'm really digging the idea of, uh, they don't have an example of which one RC would be, would you? Because she's a bike and she's super cool. All right, so champion or outrider. Well, if I'm a hunter and I'm an experimental hunter, I probably spend a lot of time out there. So I think I'm going to go origin is going to be outrider. Uh, and we'll deal with it of that. So uh, Outrider bot mode movement. I have 30 feet. Uh, starting health is three. Uh, do, 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 do. Essence scores increase smart essence by one. Not Z. How about one? There we go. Uh, origin skill. Alertness or survival skill. I'm going to guess we're going to go survival because it's going to help with that tracking. Uh, I don't know why they have limited articulation. I think this must be a misprint because they have limited articulation under the, the top part of Outrider. Um, and it should be down in Outrider alt mode. Um, so just ignore that. And then languages, because I always forget languages. I'm going to go Cybertronian. Uh, we'll go English for our Earth language, because that's the language I s -s 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 speak. And then uh, another. Uh, Another language for each three points of smarts. Okay, so we got that. Uh, and then as long as we have this here, let's go down to our alt mode. So alt mode, health three, size, we're gonna go common. So we're gonna be small. Uh, and we do have a ram attack. Reach and its effect is one blunt damage trip. There we go. So we got that there. Cool. And do I have things for crew and everything in here? There we go. Crew, I can put two and then movement. I have 45 feet. Oh, and we'll put out rider. All right, cool. So we got that in there. I'm going to go back up. And we are done with that. Moving on. Uh, next section is select a role. So we're going to go through the roles. Now, <clears throat> uh, the thing that makes Transformers different from Power Rangers specifically, uh, Transformers has subclasses they call focus. Uh, they call it a focus or foci. 
uh, is the plural that they used. Um, so there are, there are only seven classes in the core book, but there's two foci for each one. Uh, so that effectively doubles uh, because the, uh, the foci, you choose them right at level one and they do kind of pretty distinctly change how the uh, class works. So with the fact that I am an experimental hunter, I might, I'm thinking about either being a scout, uh, which is kind of their version of like a, a rogue ranger kind of thing, or uh, a gunner might be really fun, uh, which I guess is a little bit closer to a ranger. Let's look at the gunner real quick. I want to see what that, that, that does. So the gunner. Gunners move about the battlefield in the name of finding the best vantage point to take their shots. Not only do they know where to shoot from, they also know where to avoid being shot. I'm liking this. I think it's easy. Yeah, it's interesting. All right. So training, you get a uh, speed and smarts. Uh, and trained in projectile weapons and qualified in standard and limited ballistic weapons. Um, so that in and of itself uh, is is very useful because if you uh, if you are qualified in a weapon in Transformers, uh, that means that you can automatically requisition it without having to roll anything for, 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 for it. So that um, is very very useful. Um, we'll uh, we'll figure out our focus in a little bit. And then uh, armament. A gunner always has a gun at hand. You gain an additional integrated weapon hard point. So I'm going to put this where do we want to go. I guess we'll call this a perk. So we'll go armament additional integrated weapon hard point. So at this point... At this point, um, this character now has four integrated hard points, three of which can be weapons. I don't know what to do with the fourth one because uh, I was unaware of uh, hard points being used to integrate anything other than weapons, but we'll figure that out in a little bit. So that's kind of cool. Uh, next, you know how to attack with the butt of a gun without damaging your firearm. When you have a ballistic weapon in an external hard point, it also counts as a close combat bludgeon. You don't add any benefit you normally gain from attacks with a ballistic weapon when you use it as a close combat bludgeon. So basically, every gun you have, you can also just pistol whip with people with. That's kind of cool. So we're going to go here. Pistol whip. Ballistic weapons and external hard points. Close combat legends. Helps if I spell things correctly. Okay, so we got that. And then rapid reload. Reload as free action. Okay, cool. Uh, like in that, I don't know why I did that to the twice. Tremors are fun, folks. Um, stop at. So that's cool. We got that. Now we have to pick a, uh, so that's our, our base stuff. And I've, I've just given up on looking at the other one. Nope. I, I like this. And we also get a boost to our speed and our smarts. Boom. Stop it. Okay. Then we also get a Cybertronian perk. So you put that in here too. So let's go. Boom. Uh, impromptu. Imprompt turret. When you convert from your bot mode with ballistic weapons and your external hardpoints, 
You can spend an Energon point to treat the firearms as integrated hardpoint weapons in your alt mode for the rest of the scene. Whoa! This turns nuts. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as impromptu turret and just leave it as a reminder because I'm running out of space here. Um... My bike is just going to be a mobile gun platform. I have got, with that, let's say I have like, I've, I've got two, uh, I've got two handguns. I've got integrated, I've got three integrated weapons. Um, now, when I convert to bot mode, I will have five guns on my bot mode. This looks fun. Uh, so training, uh, roll skills. Gain a rank in two skills from the following uh, alertness, initiative, survival, and targeting. Uh, so, I would like... So, targeting is going to be a big deal uh, for, for us. So, we're definitely going to take targeting because that's going to be how we do our uh, all of our guns and stuff like that. that, that because we're specifically ballistic weapons are, are, are going to be targeting based. So, we're going to use targeting for our speed essence. And then... I think I'm going to double dip into survival just because if I do get that specialization in tracking, then I'm going to want it uh, to have that. So, yeah, but we're definitely going to be doing a lot in uh, speed as well to give us some decent targeting. Um, yeah. So we've got that. We've got that. We've got that. So is there somewhere decent that I can put background bonds gear there's no note section here's some origin notes uh, so I'm just going to put on here trained in limited armor not tamed trained in limited armor and projectile weapons qualified in standard and limited ballistic weapons. Cool. I do that every single t -t time because I type too fast. Or I don't actually type that fast. I type faster than my brain thinks. All right. So got that now it's time to choose a focus so gunner focus options you have gunslinger or sharpshooter I may focus on gunslinger because I'm just I'm visualizing this character as we build them and they're a bike that can just keep adding weapons to them and while it would be cool to have like a rifle and then like another rifle and then maybe like a smaller uh, weapon as our, our three integrated. Because uh, rifles are uh, require two hard points. So if you have them integrated, it would take two of my three weapon hard points would be a rifle. And then the one that I use uh, in my hands is also a rifle. And then I'd have one other weapon. So that might be cool. Um, so let's see what they do. So, uh, at first level, they get quick draw. You gain a pair of holsters as a special external weapon hards point. You can still only wield two hands of weapons at a time in your external hard points. You can switch two hands of weapons between your external hard points as a free action. Okay, so effectively, I would have a pair of holsters, and so I would have an extra set of weapons that I can just go chink chink and instantly change them out which is really cool. Uh, so do I have a place to put my focus here? Roll, we're going to just call me, what am I called? Roll, gunslinger, gunner. Since you choose your roll at level one, you can basically use it as like a, a modifier for your class name. So gunslinger, gunner, or sniper, gunner, 
or sharpshooter gunner, that's what it was called, sorry. Um, so we have that. That means I increase my speed by one. And uh, you can choose, what do you get to choose for this one? Uh, acrobatics, initiative, or targeting. I'm going to choose initiative for this because, again, I don't like rolling initiative. Uh, if you don't have any points in a skill, um, you roll it with a snag. Um, so if you haven't invested at least one point in initiative, uh, you are going to roll uh, your initiative with a snag, which is never fun. Unless you build your character uh, with the idea that you're not going to be going first. Which can be a very advantageous character to be. If you are a more support-based character um, or a control-based character, you can actually benefit a lot from letting everyone get where they're supposed to be and then do, using your abilities. So, And you can kind of do that uh, here. I don't know the system massively well because I haven't played it a ton. Uh, but if I remember correctly, they have a few kind of more controller-focused um, builds, I guess you could call them. And there's a few weapons that they're alternate... Uh, abilities uh, tend to focus a little bit more on control style stuff. So, yeah, that being said, um, so yeah, that is our focus. And now, moving on, it is time for us to spread our essence points out. So, again, um, <clears throat> we've got 12 essence points to go, and each one has to have at least one. So with this character, uh, we have 10 more, um, and I would like speed to be really high. So I'm actually going to put half of them into speed right now. So now we have five more. Uh, I think smarts, adding another three to that, so we can have five in smarts. And then I have two more. I think I'm going to put them into social. And I'm actually not, well... Yeah, I'm not super upset with the idea of not having a super high s s strength score. Um, so I think... I think I'm just going to put another point. I'm going to hyper-specialize this. I generally don't. I, I don't like to kind of hyper-specialize a class uh, if I don't have to. But I'm going to try it this time because I've, I've never done that before. Um, so yeah, so we've got... Our skill points, and again, to test to make sure that we have enough, you should have 16 essence points here. So we have 2 plus 8 is 10, 5 plus 1 is 6, 6 and 10 is 16. We have the correct amount. And then to make sure you have enough skill points, um, you should have the same number of skill points and specializations as you have in your essence score. So we're going to start with strength. Uh, and I think, just to be easy, I'm going to go with conditioning, because that just means I have four health instead of three. It means I'm going to be kind of useless when it comes to strength-based tasks, which I'm perfectly fine with. I'm not meant to be a heavy lifter. I blow shit up. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm going to come back to speed, because it's my biggest one. Let's do smarts. Um, so we have two in survival. I'm going to take specialization and that, so I've used two more. So we've done four. Um, and I think alertness, I think I'm going to get rid of this because I like having another thing in alertness just because it makes sense. If I'm a hunter, I should be relatively alert. Alertness is what you use to, you know, uh, uh, your perception checks and things like that. I believe one of the specializations is perception. Um, so <clears throat> alertness would be very, very useful for this particular character. And then that tracking edge, I like that. Uh, for social, uh, do, 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 do. I like, if they're a hunter, I'm going to do a streetwise for one. I think I'm just going to load them up on streetwise. Again, I am hyper-focusing this character to be very good at one particular thing. I don't know if that's the best idea for a Transformer, but I have, I have created a very specific character here, and I'm just leaning into it hardcore. So they, they understand how the real world works. All right, now let's go to the one we have tons of. Um, so driving, when you're in vehicle mode, um, like that ram attack I put in there, um, that's a driving attack. So I want at least one point in driving. Um, again, targeting is going to be big. So I'm going to... So it was one, two, three, four, five. We have three more. 
Uh, and I think because I am qualified in ballistic weapons, I'm going to take a s ballistic. I'm going to take a specialization in ballistic weapons, which just means basically any time I make an attack, I'm going to be rolling all of my uh, my dice, which is very very nice. Um, that being said, I want to go real quick. I want to make sure I'm not misremembering how close combat bludgeons work. Um, do, do, do. Equipment properties, come on. So close combat bludgeoning, it can be a finesse or might. So um, <clears throat> because we can attack with them, I'm going to put one point in finesse, so I'm not rolling it. Uh, at a snag. Uh, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got one more that I can put in. Infiltration would not be a bad idea for this particular kick a character. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to put infiltration just because, again, that would be something that a bounty hunter uh, or some kind of hunter. Uh, would use a fair amount would be infiltration but mostly it's hey i can shoot shit uh so yeah i've got all those last thing we want to do is figure out our scores so essence zero zero turns us to 11 uh eight zero zero turns us to 18 five zero zero turns us to 15 and then two zero zero Turns us to 12. Cool. We got that. Uh, yeah. And then the final thing we need to do to build this kick, kick, kick character. Um, and I, uh, as I've mentioned b -b 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 before, <clears throat> uh, your weapons are... Uh, your weapons are a massive part of how you play the, uh, the character. Um, because just because of how they do, uh, just because of how they work now, blaster, shotgun. So what are ballistic projectile launcher? It's projectile. Okay. So there's ballistic. Okay. So yeah, everything counts as well. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Sorry, just I'm looking over the, the, the weapons list. So um, because I am qualified, and I'm going, before I say the wrong thing here, I'm going to actually relook up how this all works. Qualified to go to your perks and also lists. Unlike weapon training, you can access any equipment you are qualified in without requisitioning it. For example, gunners are qualified in limited ballistic weapons. They can choose any weapon with a ballistic trait of limited availability to take on their mission, no question asked, and more importantly, no requisition test uh, required. Um, and one of the things you can use for uh, your requisition budgets for is a uh, uh, is getting. Um, Upgrades. So technically, if you were to take a standard weapon and then put uh, a limited upgrade on it, it therefore becomes a limited weapon, which we are qualified on. Um, so uh, obviously, uh, I, I think you guys all know, um, at least one of the people that wrote this um, watches my videos every so often. So if I'm doing this wrong, feel free to correct me how it's supposed to work in the comments. However... My reading of this is if I want to take a standard weapon, put on a limited upgrade or a limited weapon with a limited upgrade, because it still qualifies as limited, I don't have to requisition that. I just get it. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, specifically, I want uh, a pair of blasters um, uh, with different energy types if I can. I have to look at what the, uh, how the upgrades work as far as what their actual upgrades are. Okay, upgrades, so ammo belt. Uh, 
Oh, you put flashlights on them. Laser sight. Uh, so that could be cool. Aiming the weapon provides an additional upshift one. Uh, I could make it non-lethal. I could put its scope on it. I could make them silenced. Silence would be fun. I could, I could scope them. That could be cool. Scary? Wow, I could make a scary weapon. So up to limited. So blazing engulfs a weapon and fire. Corrosive tip. So I can make deadly ones that would, all right, explosive rounds. Okay, cool. So explosive rounds, weapon with a ballistic trait, the weapon game sharp one blast 10 foot radius alternate effect. So with explosive rounds, I could basically turn them into exploding bullets. That's cool. Um, Microtech weapon. Oh, it just makes it smaller. That might be fun. Because I, I could take a Microtech weapon. Oh, wait a minute. This this could be cool. Hold, please. So, I can do up to a limited weapon with a limited upgrade, and it still counts as limited. So what I'm thinking... That's a thrown or fired weapon that requires like a bow. Nope, don't want that. Long range rifle. Element jet. So element jet is basically an elemental shotgun. Directed element rifle. Uh, it still uses targeting, but it requires technology D2. I don't have, uh, I could have technology. But what's it do? One elemental damage. Hmm. Helmet grade, cover grenade. Huh. So, so the reason I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, if I was to take directed element life uh, rifle and miniaturize it, basically use the microtech technology upgrade, I could have handheld weapons that do different elemental um, things. And the reason I want that is because the different elements all have alternate uh, effects that allow me to do different things. And because of the... Uh, holster thing that I have. What was it called? I think it was uh, arm. No. Something to do with my gunslinger thing that I forgot to write down because um, I'm stupid. Uh, but that would mean I could just switch them out whenever I want and that would give me a lot of versatility as far as being able to do a lot of different things. So I think... What I'm going to do So long range rifle, I've got I've got three integrated hard points uh, that I need to fill, and then a fourth one of a non weapon, which I don't know what that means yet, but we'll deal with that in a second. So for long range rifle, uh, two of those hands, two of those integrated hard points are gonna be a long range rifle. I'm going to go long range rifle. Uh, and I think I'm just going to leave that one alone. It's already limited. I don't need to put an upgrade on it or anything la, 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 like that. Uh, so range is 150, 600, which is a good range um, with min 30. And that just means minimum I have to be at least 30 feet away a way to use long range rifle. Uh, hard point is integrated. Traits are 
ballistic mounted. I have to remember what mounted means before I say the wrong thing here. Requires a mount such as a tripod or shooting rest that takes a standard action to set up and a free action to pick up. Hmm. I wonder if there's an upgrade that can get rid of the mounted aspect of it. Because I might, I might get rid of that. Aerodynamic ammo belt, scary scope, absolute silencer, time bomb, waterproof, amphibious balance grip. Raising corrosive locked lingering. Da, 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 da. Piercing. Plate piercing. Proximity bog. Radiant. Fine grip. Reinforced grip. Reinforced hard point. Tasing, rumbling smasher. Okay, so nothing that I have access to could get rid of that. But we're gonna. That's that's perfectly fine with me. So I'm I'm good with that. Let's go back to our long range rifle. Uh, so ballistic mounted, reload, sniper. Uh, and requires alertness D6. I do not have alertness D6, so I can't use this. Always remember to look at the requirements, guys. Uh, then I might just go with, I believe there is just a regular rifle, yeah. So we're going to get rid of the long, it's not long range either, it's long range. Just going to use a regular rifle, and we'll do uh, an upgrade to it to make it cool. So 100, 400, still going to be integrated, uh, and this is ballistic and sniper, so I don't need... It doesn't have the reload. That's cool. Ballistic and sniper. Uh, so the attack does one. All right, no attack is targeting effect one sharp, and it cer currently doesn't have an alternate effect. So what I'm going to do with this is I am going to add an upgrade. Uh, to make it do something different. And I think the upgrade that I want to put on this one particularly I think I like the idea of explosive rounds. So And there's no, uh, yeah, so we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to call this explosive rifle. So a basic with a limited upgrade still counts as limited. This is ballistic, so I can um, requisition it. So one sharp or one sharp blast 10 feet. So, or, and there's nothing that, actually, I wonder if I can use one sharp last 10 feet. Cool. So now I don't have to use that. Okay, so one sharp, one sharp last 10 feet. So that's one of my integrated, and that takes two of my integrated spots. And then, so yeah, uh, then I'm going to just have a bunch of Microtech. So, Microtech, what was it called? To make it so I can have them, yeah, directed element rifle. So, D-E-R. We're just going to call it D-E-R for right now. We're going to give them different names in just a second here. Because uh, it does require technology D2. I'm going to make sure I've got a D2 in technology. I don't right now. Uh, I can get rid of one of my survivals to... 
go to technology D2. So there, now I've got what I need. Again, important that you uh, build your character. There it is. Uh, think about the stuff that you're doing. So Microtech DER, uh, range 75. Uh, this is gonna be external. And then computerized. And elements, and we're going to pick an element in a second here. Um, still uses targeting. I don't know why I put target there. Targeting. All right. So so elements. Do 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 do. So the different elements, acid, cold, electric, electromagnetic, fire, laser, sonic, are the ones that are in here. So the effect uh, is what's going to change because it's going to change from one element damage to, uh, so right now it's one element damage. So one element, and then it's going to have an alternate effect as well. So. Uh, because I can have basically four of these because I have one in each hand and then two more uh, because of my uh, my holsters I am going to choose so I get four elements so cold to add a stun effect acid deals extra damage if they defend with toughness I like electric. And then fire just does extra damage when they defend with evasion. So I think, so this is going to be one, this is going to be my fire. Um, two fire against evasion. All right, so then we're going to do the same thing here. So Microtech DER 75, it's an external computerized. Oh, and we can replace element here with fire. And this is going to be acid targeting. So that means one acid two against toughness, two acid, there we go, I don't know why that one's much smaller, oh because toughness is a bigger word, Duh. Uh, no alternate effect for that one, uh, third one, microtech DER, 75, this is going to be another external. Uh, and this one, I think I like laser over cold, because cold adds stun one, um, and if it already has a stun effect, it increases the stun by one. Lasers add stun one and can be used to spot targets as an alternate effect. So I think I'm going to go computerized laser still targeting and then it's going to do one laser or so we go one stun as an alternate effect and then can be used to spot there we go So you've got that, we've got a laser one, and then one more, Microtech DER, 75, external, computerized, and then what's the final damage type that I want? I could go Sonic, um, 
which basically allows you to target willpower for down uh, downshift two, um, which in general, uh, with a few rare exceptions, willpower is always going to be a lower. Uh, I mean, even on 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 my character here, if we look at our willpower versus everything else, willpower is fifteen versus 18 or 11 and I'm built a little bit more towards smarts um, so that might be interesting and having a sound gun is always cool Ooh, uh, deep. but I also like just electric because you just get uh, upshift one on all attacks um, so I think yeah I think I'm going to do electric Targeting. Wow, that was hard. One electric. And then I always copy from here so I don't have to write upshift. Electric. Upshift one. Text. Actually, I can just put this here. Oh, it's not an alternate effect, though, so I'll put it there, yeah. So we got that. We still have one more integrated hard point, uh, and then an integrated hard point that's not a weapon, which again I don't quite understand. I'm gonna keep looking through the equipment to see if there's something else I can put in that. Uh, but we need one more integrated weapon that's only one hand. Uh, so we could do uh, just a regular blaster with. Uh, like effectively, we'd have like a blaster built into our arm. Uh, or a shotgun. Shotgun would probably be useful, but it has its two hands. If we were to do a Microtech shotgun, though, that could be our other... Yeah, we'll do a Microtech shotgun. So, Microtech shotgun. Uh, range is 2060. Uh, and then... We go, this is going to be integrated. Uh, it's ballistic and reload. This is still targeting. And then it does one sharp SARP sharp two targets in. 15 foot cone. So we got a shotgun. And later on, theoretically, as you play the game more, you can upgrade these weapons again and put multiple upgrades in them. They don't, uh, you're no longer qualified in them, so, um, or once they get beyond limited, but uh, yeah, so there's like, as you can see, I've just absolutely loaded up this character with a crap ton of stuff. Um, and the, the only one that we haven't put an upgrade on is this. Um, or no, it's explosive, yeah. So, And then uh, we're going to change the names of these so that it's just not just Microtech Dur, Microtech Dur, Microtech Dur. So this is going... Uh, Let's call this Hot Shot. Uh, we're going to name all this because, of course, we are. Uh, we got Hot Shots. We got... Acid Burn. I got to get my... Um, <laughs> got to get my hackers references in. Uh, laser. We're going to call you... Because I, I love naming weapons just because it's fun and it's so much more fun to go. I pull out hot shot. Acid burn. We're going to call our laser one. Um, we're going to call you spotlight. I'm not going to spell you right, but I'm going to call you spotlight. Um, uh, I had a name, I was going to use it, and then I instantly went, no, 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 no. Uh, Y'all are 
perfectly able to, to come up with your own theories and ideas as to what that was. Um, but um, we're going to call this short out. And then uh, I think I'm just going to name those because these are those are perfectly fine. So my Microtech shotgun and my explosive rifle, I don't feel like needing to name those. But these, because I'm going to be switching between them often because of that feature, I'm going to look for again because I completely... Uh, I forgot to write it down. Gunslinger, that's... It's called Quick Draw. Okay, so I'm going to at least put into my notes here. Impromptu turret. Uh, and then I'm also going to put in Quick Draw. And I'm not going to name them because I don't have enough space here, but... So, yeah. So now I've got these four things for my uh, externals. I've got a Microtech shotgun and an explosive rifle. I still need to, so I'm going to look through real quick just to see if I can find something I can put into an integrated hardpoint. Locations where weapons and equipment can be installed within your chassis. So, weapons you use are external. You only carry six hands of weapons, which is fine. I only have four. Uh, so right now it's all weapons, but I'm going to go look at what's beyond weapons because I want something here kits I get support equipment okay so here's stuff I could have so Bulbar. Stolen to an available integrated hardpoint. I've never done these, so you always have an edge on ram attacks and bot mode. You're immune to effects that would knock you over, I'm assuming. Cage. Caterpillar. Tread. Dozer blade. Oh, that's kind of cool. Bulldozer thing. Ladder. A loader. Well, that's kind of cool. Loader would effectively be like a flatbed kind of thing that you can turn into a shield. That's kind of cool. Rotor blades. Haha, <laughs> that would be cool. I could be a flying motorcycle. Tow cable and hook. Water cannon. Pile driver would be fun. So rotor blades again, would make it so I could fly as my bike. Again, arrow movement equal to half your ground movement, and you can take off and land vertically and can hover. But in bot mode, your rotor blades count as a close combat heavy blade. You can use it even if you're not trained to use a close combat heavy blade. If you are trained to use a close combat heavy blade, you gain uh, upshift one and finesse or might still test attack for your rotor blades. Additionally, against organic targets, you deal plus one damage. That could be fun. Or a tow cable and hook. I think I got to go with tow cable and hook. So I don't have enough space here to put it in. 
So I'm going to put in here gear. I'm going to go tow cable and hook integrated. So that's what I have for my. Oh, this is super cool! Uh, I never, I didn't realize this was the thing. Next time I might, next time I build a character, I may go here first for my integrated instead of just putting another weapon in it because there's some really cool stuff here. Um, so yeah, tow cable to hook in your alt mode. Um, just gives you a tow cable so you can kind of tow things, which I'm not really built for because I have super low, uh, I have super low strength. However, it says you get an edge on brawn skill test to pull anything. So that effectively means normally I'd be rolling brawn uh, with a snag. Since I have an edge in it, they cancel out. So I can just roll uh, roll regularly uh, to tow things. So that's useful. Uh, and then for bolt mode, your tow, ca uh, your tow cable counts as a grappler. You can use it even if you're not trained to use a grappler. Um, and you can use either finesse or might for it. Um, and you ignore the athletics or finesse requirements of using a g -g 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 grappler. So I just have a grappler that I can use, um, which is super, super cool. And I'm very, very happy about that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> this is my, this is my very, very cool <laughs> dude. I don't know why this is here. Uh, I'm assuming it is taken this from one of uh, uh, it's it's taking it from one of these things here. Assuming that your attacks are going to be the same, I don't know why it would do that. I think that's bad. I don't know why it doesn't auto populate these because that would be smart. Uh, I got to remember. Uh, Eleven, eighteen, fifteen. Can't remember the, 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 that one. Twelve. There we go. 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 All right, overall, uh, I think that's the character. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's give this a name. Uh, what are we gonna, so everyone knows Transformers, they all have like cool names, Bumblebee, Optimus Prime, Jazz. So what are we going to call this guy? I recently, created uh, a character in DC Universe Online because I uh, uh, I was bored and I wanted to play something on my PS5 and DC Universe Online is free. Um, and it also, uh, uh, I had some free stuff that I got from uh, PlayStation Plus for it. So I'm like, oh, I will go ahead and try this. And so I created a character that I just called Sovereign Hunter. Uh, and I kind of based it on, like I tried to make it look like a, a ripoff of Samus Aran from Metroid except male and green and gold because I like green and gold. Uh, not as most people would think with the fact that I'm from Wisconsin, it has nothing to do with the Packers, everything to do with the green mighty Morphin power ranger. Uh, you guys probably figure that out, but a lot of people in Wisconsin, when I say, Oh yeah, the colors are green and gold. They're like, Oh, Packers colors. I'm like, no, I really don't care about the Packers. I did at one point when I was younger, I used to really enjoy watching football games like once every couple of months. Because uh, my folks are really into it. And in Wisconsin, you ha it's like state law. You have to be into football. Um, but football's never been my game. So Anyway, so I thought about maybe using Sovereign Hunter as the name for this. But it's a little bit long and a little bit... Uh, doesn't quite fit with the kind of Transformers thing I'm thinking of. But this is still uh, kind of a... So what if we called this, hmm. I'm going to check because part of me thinks that this is already a transformer. Ha, it is a transformer. I was gonna go, well, let's call him Dropshot. Dropshot's a, a cool name. It's definitely a cool name because it already exists. Uh, and then apparently there was, oh wait, so drop shots a Decepticon. Okay. So we're not going to call them drop shots. So, um, I, 
Call him Sneak Attack. Because, I mean, obviously, you know, D&D is my, you know, my first R, uh, well, technically my second, but the first one I got really into. So, yeah, let's call him Sneak Attack. Uh, and he's level one. Uh, and there, we can put more attacks up here if we really wanted to. This is uh, this is where we could put our grappler if I wanted to. But I've been doing this for an hour. Uh, so, uh, final thoughts. Um, this is a super, super cool character that I had a ton of fun but, but building. You know, Sneak Attack, uh, they're, uh, they're an ex uh, experimental hunter. Because of that, they have the... Uh, the grappling hook effectively which i think is really cool i don't know what experiment created them where they needed to have a grappling hook maybe they just that's exactly what they were like they were they were designed specifically to become the ultimate bounty hunter um and so because of that they have this integrated bounty hunting hook uh and they're a motorcycle because motorcycles are cool very very high speed horrible strength pretty decent smarts and okay socials um, that is mostly for them to be able to understand the criminal underworld. And then, as you could see, we just went hog wild with giving them a bunch of different choices of, hmm, oh, you wanted to use your evasion defense? Ha! Here's uh, some fire so that you burn. Oh, you're going to just tough it out? Let's burn through that. So, yeah, all of this is super, super cool and fun. But uh, anyway, that is going to be all for me today. As always, uh, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to turn notifications on. All of that is super, super important in uh, the comments down b -b 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 below. Um, what would you want to do if you made a gunslinger? What kind of cool weapons would you want? You don't have to, to have the, uh, the rules open in front of you. Just what cool hand guns would you want to have and what cool abilities would you want them to have let me know in the comments below don't worry about mechanics or anything just come up with something cool let me know in the comments down below otherwise again it's all for me today and i'll see you guys in the next time all right bye bye